I am literally filming this in my pajama pants. That is the best part about my job. Oh, we know what we have. Let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for in life. Call us crazy, but things are finally right. With you and I, the future is bright. Hey guys and good morning, welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, welcome to my channel. If you're not new here, then this hair is probably quite the shock to you unless you follow me on Instagram. But yeah, I spontaneously decided to get bangs. I don't know why, because I hate having my hair in my face. So I also don't really know how to style them very well. And I just really didn't have time to do anything today. So they're just gonna, they're just gonna exist. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I still don't even recognize myself with bangs. But today, as you can tell by the title, I am finally sharing my birth story. The little guy is down here. He's having a little snack, but he is now four months old, almost five months, and I'm finally getting around to sharing his birth story. So if you're new to my channel, I have an almost five-year-old daughter. I was pregnant with her when I was 15 and gave birth to her when I was 16, and this is my second baby. I had him when I was 20, and their pregnancies and births were completely different. I didn't write down any notes or anything. I'm just kind of going off the top of my head. So bear with me Okay, so on May 14th, I had a doctor's appointment. I was 38 weeks and five days pregnant So at that point I was more pregnant than I had ever been. I had my daughter the day I turned 36 weeks So I was pretty uncomfortable and pretty like just done with being pregnant um, I had a doctor's appointment that morning. She asked me if I wanted a membrane sweep and I agreed to it because that is what put me in labor with my daughter. So I thought that it was worth a shot. So I got that done. The appointment was in the morning. It was like 11 o'clock and I didn't really notice anything. When I got it done with my daughter, I was bleeding and cramping like pretty much right after. So I just assumed that it probably wasn't going to work. So once we got home, we kind of just did a bunch of things to try and induce labor. We went curb walking for a few hours. Um, we did like all of the old wives tales on like how to induce labor. We tried everything and then right before we were gonna lay our daughter down for bed I had read a DM on Instagram and someone told me that I should try um, Going on swings and at that point I was just like willing to try anything So we have a park pretty close to our house and we decided to just go for a walk to the park We did a little bit more curb walking on the way and then me and my daughter swang on the swings for like probably like 15 minutes. And by that point I was getting some contractions, but nothing too consistent. Just like very light cramping, like nothing, nothing serious. So we came home, laid my daughter down and we were just kind of relaxing. I decided to go for a bath, which was like my very first bath of like my whole pregnancy. Like I don't think I took a bath at any point before then. So it was really nice and I was super relaxed. And I've heard lots that relaxing helps you go into labor because it releases the hormones that you need to be able to kickstart Labor. So I went for a bath. Xavier made me a little platter of food. It was so cute. By this point, it was like 8 o'clock. And the contractions were slowly starting to pick up, but again, nothing like super serious. So I still wasn't really thinking that it was going to be it. Probably should have fixed this before I started recording. But yeah, I got out of the bath and my brother was actually sleeping over. So he was downstairs with Xavier. They were just hanging out. And I was upstairs and I did the, I think it's called the mile circuit. Um, I had done it one time before, but I just decided to try it again, see if anything happens because I was just so uncomfortable and so done with being pregnant. So yeah, I did that. That took, I think it takes like just over an hour. And after this is when the contractions really started to pick up. At that point, I started to time them and they were only getting closer and closer together, but still they didn't feel strong enough to go into the hospital. And I didn't want to go in until I was like sure because I didn't want to get sent home. When I was pregnant with my daughter, I went in so many times and each time I got sent home. Of course, up until the very last time when I actually had her. So yeah, I just really did not want to get sent home, especially since my daughter had to go to her grandparents and I didn't want them to wake up and come get her for nothing. So I just stuck it out as long as I could. I tried going to bed, but then at two in the morning, I just decided that like there's no way I could sleep. So me and Xavier were just kind of walking around the house. I was swinging back and forth because I was in pain. And then I believe it was three in the morning when we finally decided to go to the hospital. We called up Xavier's parents. We were originally just gonna meet them at the hospital and then they were gonna pick up Sophie from there. <laughs> but they decided to come all the way out to our house and just drive us to the hospital and then take Sophie. And at this point, my contractions were coming strong. The hospital is about uh, probably like a 30 minute drive from our house. 
so it's definitely not too far and plus it was like three in the morning so there was like no traffic so we got to the hospital we said our goodbyes to little miss sophie and xavier's parents we got checked in and they immediately brought us back to triage and they got me in a gown and they checked my dilation all within like 10 minutes of being at the hospital when they checked my dilation i was at a five already so at my hospital i don't know if it's like this everywhere but you have to be a five in order to be admitted so they brought me up straight away and at that point like i think we were only at the hospital for like less than 15 minutes when we got admitted which was super nice because when i was in labor with sophie i think we waited like two, three hours to be able to get a room. So that was super nice. We got into our comfy room. It was such a cute room. If you guys saw my birth story, then you guys kinda saw it. Or not my birth story, my birth vlog. He just got two new teeth in, so he's chewing on everything. Hi. So yeah, they brought me up to the room and right away they gave me an IV. They asked me if I wanted any pain medication and I told them that I didn't at the moment and that I just wanted to kind of wait it out and see how it goes. They did kind of try and push for the epidural since I was already at a five and they didn't know how fast I was gonna progress. They just kind of wanted to make sure that if I wanted the epidural that I was able to get it. And I told them no and that, <laughs> and that I was just going to wait it out and try and go natural, which I ended up regretting pretty heavily. But yeah, they gave me the IV, they asked me a ton of questions. And then really from that time to like seven o'clock, it was just a waiting game. We were just waiting for me to progress and for things to kind of just pick up. Around seven is when my contractions like started to definitely get a little bit more painful. So the doctor came in and he offered me gas, which I decided to try. I ended up really not liking it. I didn't like the way it made me feel and I didn't really find that it helped too much. So I just wasn't a fan of it and I didn't really end up using it all that much. Then a little after eight, the doctor came in, she checked my cervix. So from around like three to 4 a.m. Um, up until she checked my cervix at eight, I had dilated. Um, from a five to an eight and she asked me if I wanted her to break my waters Which I ended up agreeing with just so we can get things moving faster and meet this little guy So we did that and that is when everything started to go downhill <laughs> Things really picked up really fast. Okay, I just brought Hayes down to his daddy So everything was super chill up until that point the contractions were definitely manageable on a scale of one to ten I would say they were like a solid four or five like they, they definitely were not that bad but after they broke my water they really really started to pick up so fast when they broke my water so tmi i mean this is a birth story but so much water came out i do not remember feeling that with sophie it was insane my doctor said it went up her whole arm but after that it was just more waiting the last time they offered me the epidural was when they broke my water and at that point i was still like doing okay i was still doing fine so i rejected it and they said that was probably going to be the last opportunity that i had to get the epidural so i declined it again they allowed me to eat which was very odd because when i was pregnant with sophie or when i was in labor with sophie i was not allowed to eat anything only ice chips and water but I had asked them if I could eat these like crackers that we brought and they're like, yeah, sure Like go for it. Like no problem. So that was definitely nice They also brought me some jello which like 30 minutes after I had started to get very nauseous So I had called the nurse in. I had told her that I wasn't feeling too good and she ended up giving me a gravel Which didn't really help too much. I was still throwing up then we just continued to wait and the next time that they checked me It was 11 o'clock and thank goodness I was at a 10, but I had what they called a lip. So when you're at a 10, they want your cervix to be like this, but mine had like a lip. So it was slightly covered on one side, which meant that the baby would have had a harder time coming out and it would have been extremely painful and probably damaging. So they put me into what they called the Buddha position. I had to sit up with my legs like butterflied out. Um, they had like dropped the bed so my legs could go down and it was very, very uncomfortable, especially with the amount of pain that I was in. So yeah, I had to sit in this Buddha position for about an hour. I was in so much pain, but baby was still doing super good. His stats were perfect, so I was still feeling good. At around 12, like 15, I had the biggest urge to push. I was in, like I just, I needed to push. So I got her to check me and she said that there was still a bit of a lip, which really discouraged me. At that point, I was begging for the epidural when I knew it was too late. My nurse was so sweet. She was breathing with me and like teaching me these breathing exercises. And anytime I would start to 
kind of breathe too fast or whatever or like hold my breath she would be like shanna let's do this let's breathe together and that helped so much if you guys are pregnant look into breathing birth exercises they helped me so so much throughout this birth but after like 30 more minutes of all that um, they checked me again and that lip was finally gone which was just the biggest relief because they weren't allowing me to push because they didn't want that lip I think they were saying like they didn't want it to swell or something like that because that could cause a lot of problems um, so I was finally able to push and the relief that you feel when you push is insane so while the nurse was in the room we did probably like 10 minutes of practice pushes just to be able to get the baby nice and low and ready for the real pushes so at that point right before the doctor came in um Hayes's stats started to drop quite a bit and they weren't telling me this because I guess they were trying not to panic me but the screen was right there and I could see it and it kept beeping so one of the nurses just like turned it away um, because she could tell that it was kind of freaking me out a little bit. But yeah, it was time to do the real pushes. And after probably like four pushes, he was here. And they laid him on my chest, of course. And it was so beautiful. He was born at 12.29. He weighed 7 pounds, 7 ounces. And he was just so perfect. But unfortunately, this does not end here. It goes downhill from here. <laughs> Um, they laid him on my chest. We were snuggling for a little bit. Xavier cut the cord, of course. And then after about five minutes, the doctor kind of evaluated. She said that I didn't need any stitches, which was so good. But she did say that I was bleeding a lot and that she was slightly concerned. But she told me not to worry and not to panic. I was still holding haze at this point. They decided to give me Pitocin to help my uterus contract and get all the blood clots and all the blood out which was so bad. I can't even explain how bad it was. It was way worse than the entire labor. It was it was so bad. I was in so much pain. I couldn't hold Hayes anymore, so Xavier had to hold him. And at no point during my delivery did I like scream at all until then. I was in so much pain. I had a pillow over my face because I didn't want to I don't know disturb everyone so I had a pillow over my face and I was screaming into the pillow and it was just so bad I was watching what the doctors were doing and those little like pee pads she was carrying them over to the trash can and they were pooling in blood I've never seen that much blood in my entire life and at that point I started to get lightheaded and I was starting to kind of be out of it and there were so many doctors in the room they were doing like compresses on my stomach and at that point I was still on Pitocin and um, in so much pain. The doctor leaves the room for a minute and talks to another doctor um, and that doctor comes in and tells me that they need to do a sweep. She wanted to go in and pretty much just put her whole arm into my uterus and scrape all of the blood and all the blood clots out which was absolutely terrifying to hear because I've heard of this before and I've heard just how painful it is so yeah I sat there and I was crying and I was begging her not to do it <laughs> of course she had to and I knew that so she ended up doing the sweep and and that was by far the worst pain that I have ever 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 experienced and probably ever will Hopefully. I would rather give birth four times, I'm not even joking, than have that done. I was screaming like I've never screamed before. It was, oh my god. I felt so bad for my nurse, but she was just the sweetest thing. She was like holding on to me. She's like, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. And just like comforting me. But yeah, she did the sweep. She had to sweep me, I think, four times. And she had this blue bag underneath me, which was filled with blood. There was... I, there was so much blood. But after that, they slowly stopped the Pitocin um, and I was starting to feel better. I feel like that's why I really regretted not getting the epidural because if I had the epidural, that part would have been so much more bearable. After about 45 minutes of laying there, um, she was still doing like massages on my stomach, trying to make sure everything is all out. Um, and then I got up to go to the bathroom. Standing up after birth is such a weird feeling and it's just like you feel super off balance. Since you're used to being pretty front heavy having a baby and you know all that liquid inside of you. So that was super weird but I went to the bathroom and then I laid back down and they kept me in the labor and delivery room for 
I think it was like two, three hours just to make sure that I was going to be okay. They were originally going to do a blood transfusion, but they wanted to wait and see if my levels kind of leveled out after 24 hours. I just turned on the light because it was getting quite dark. But yeah, after about two to three hours, it was honestly all such a blur. I was shaking so bad, like genuinely shaking like that. So yeah, they wheeled me up to the recovery room and they were kind of just keeping a close eye on me, making sure that I was doing good. Hayes was doing so good. He was absolutely perfect. He passed all of his tests and he was he was doing so good. But yeah, that is pretty much it. After 24 hours, they checked my levels again and they were pretty much good. They weren't at a concerning level anymore, so they felt safe to send us home after 24 hours and they just wanted me to come back for some blood work. Um, just to make sure that things are still going good and thankfully they were recovery wise um, I feel like I did take a little bit longer to recover this time around that might also be an age thing since I did have Sophia when I was 16 that might have something to do with it, but yeah, that is pretty much my birth story Yeah, that was definitely the scariest thing that has ever happened to me <laughs> But I am just so thankful that everything turned out the way that it did and that I am healthy and Hayes is healthy and everyone is just doing good. I feel like in a way sharing this is going to really help me. I know that some women have it much worse and birth can be such a scary thing. And I ended up being very lucky, especially with the outcome. But yeah, that is pretty much it for today's video. If you made it this far in the video, comment a glasses emoji down below. I feel like we're slowly running out of emojis. And I will of course try my very hardest to comment one back to you guys. But yeah, that is pretty much it for today's video. I hope you guys all enjoyed and I will see you guys all in the next one. Bye guys. I've been trying to fake it. I have said I can take it. But I think you should let me go. Cause I need some time. Since I got any sleep Yeah, it's been a while oh, oh, oh. Since I've gotten some time Just for me Yeah, I need some time